like, subscribe, notifications. The year is 5016U, and the galaxy is home to trillions. The third committee runs Union, the all-encompassing hegemony that rules over humanity in a post-capitalistic utopia. There are no other sentient life forms but humans, who flit among the millions of planets by way of blink space, an unknowable alternate plane of existence. They communicate and share knowledge through the OmniNet, a network built through blink space that holds humanity together as one. But this utopia is fraying at the edges, despite thousands of years of strife suffered to arrive at this imperfect peace. Once again, humanity is host to rebellions, insurrection, piracy. Throughout the galaxy, five suppliers offer armaments to wage these skirmishes and battles. Most notably, they each offer mechs, towering machines capable of incredible acts of stealth, movement, defense, and combat. These mechs are deployed only when all other options have failed, since they are restricted in use and the pilots who control them are among the most elite soldiers in all the human race. These pilots are Lancers, and you are one of them. Lancer is a tabletop RPG by Miguel Lopez and Tom Parkinson Morgan of Massive Press. It was published at the end of 2019 after a hugely successful Kickstarter. The game is split into two modes of play, narrative and mech combat. In narrative, you play the role of a Lancer or mech pilot in their downtime. This is relatively open play where you roll skill checks wherever necessary to advance a story or pick up reserve bonuses for mech combat. In mech combat itself, you play in turn order on a grid or hex map and pit mechs against each other through relatively complex rules that simulate a war game in several ways. Your Lancer character starts at license level 0. The LL refers to their overall access to technologies as created by the major mech manufacturers in the setting. You get awarded one LL at the end of every mission which I thought it was a very nice and straightforward method of character progression. What's not so straightforward are all of the things that you get when you level up. Thankfully, there's a chart that clearly tracks stat progression on your way to LL12, the level cap for this game. At LL0, you start with the following. When you pick a background, of which the book provides 20 examples, you can later invoke that background anytime outside of combat to make a roll slightly easier or harder. Then you pick four triggers, which are short phrases that describe key decisions and actions. They offer a plus two bonus to a roll if they apply to a situation, and you can level them up to plus four and then plus six. They are pretty loosely defined, but only apply in the narrative mode of play. As far as stats go, your pilot has size, HP, evasion, speed, and E-defense, which is their ability to evade attacks to electronic systems. These have universal starting values. Then, before a mission, your pilot can opt for personal armor, up to two weapons, and three other pieces of gear. When you look at the pilot character sheet, it's clear that your pilot doesn't have much of a personal life, at least not as expressed in the game mechanics or places to write that sort of stuff down. They live to pilot in mechs. The idea in Lancer is that mechs are these military constructs anywhere from 9 to 45 feet tall and are powered by a cold fusion unit. Their design ranges from bipedal to hexapedal, from steel and rubber to steel and organic, and even transdimensional. The mech concepts in Lancer are, in my opinion, the hallmark feature of the game that inform the rest of the setting. Since some mechs have teleportation technology and things like invisibility, it necessarily means that the universe is very high sci-fi, skirting on the edge of Magitech. The book provides about 30 incredibly illustrated mechs from four major in-game manufacturers, each with a designation and very unique technology options. The choices here, at least at first glance, are absolutely staggering. The game does try to force you into a default mech called the Everest that has relatively limited starting options, but even the Everest can ultimately be outfitted with all kinds of wild weapon and system combinations. Mechs have four stats, Hull, Agility, Systems, and Engineering. Each stat ranges from plus zero to plus six, and those bonuses apply to skill checks, saves in combat, and other bonuses when building your mech. If you are building a mech other than the Starter Everest frame, then you would probably start by choosing a role type. Mechs can specialize as Strikers, Controllers, Defenders, Artillery, or Support. You will often also see dual role mechs as well. Once you've chosen a mech, it gives you the core stats to start with as well as some inherent traits for that mech. As far as choosing weapons and systems, you are limited by three things more or less. The mount types, your license level, 
and the amount of system points or SP that you have to spend. Each mech has a variety of mount types, which can be a little confusing to visualize, but after a while you don't even bother with any sort of concrete visuals because mech design is so weird and fluid. I thought the most notable feature of mech customization in this game was the fact that when your license level goes up, you can swap out tech at no cost. In this way, you can test some technologies out in a battle without committing to them, and your mech is ever evolving. The rationalization for this in the setting is that everything is 3D printed on the fly. It's never the material cost or even really the time that holds you back. Printing up a full repair for your mech takes 10 hours in game. What you're limited by is your license level. You have to buy your way up with licenses for each manufacturer separately across three tiers. There's no real explanation for why you're able to swap out your pilot's talents when leveling up. That's just to keep gameplay fresh and interesting, I guess. Actually, tracking all the license levels and system points can be daunting for a beginner, which is why there's CompCon. Before I dive in, I want to explain the name. CompCon is short for Companion Concierge, and that's a class of artificial intelligence in the game's setting. Anyway, CompCon in our world is a free web app where you can create an account and make pilots, customize mechs, and read all the rules of Lancer. You don't see digital companions like this very often for tabletop RPGs. CompCon happens to be peculiarly robust, with options to import and export builds, import new content as it's published, and even manage NPCs, encounters, and missions. Everyone I know who plays Lancer swears by CompCon. It certainly beats the perfunctory design of the physical character sheet. Also definitely worth mentioning is retrograde minis. All of the mechs on this site are based on Lancer. You don't spec your mech out here, you just design a token for it. It's a pretty remarkable companion site for the game, especially if you play on a virtual tabletop and need a nice token for your mech. I think my very favorite concept in Lancer is these super intelligent artificial entities called non-human persons or NHPs. These are a bit different from comp cons in that they are vastly superior to humans by default, but are neurologically shackled and designated to a single system on a mech. In game terms, this means that the system gets unique advantages, presumably because a hyper-intelligent AI is managing it. But this comes with some limitations. One is that you can have only one system with an AI tag installed at a time, and the other, more fascinating one, is that anytime you take structure damage or overheat, you make a d20 roll, and on a 1, the NHP enters cascade, or unshackling of its limiters, and it will take over your entire mech's controls. NHP the only way to regain detected. control is to shut down the mech and restart it. In narrative mode, you are having a conversation at the table about what your pilot is doing in their downtime. If you need to make a skill check, there is a process for making that roll. Rolling a check in this game involves rolling a d20 to meet or beat a 10. The target is always, always a 10, but you can have accuracy or difficulty modifiers, which are one or more d6s that you can roll and take the highest value for to either add or subtract from your d20 roll. Downtime can be used to secure what are called reserves, which are advantages that are inserted into your next mission. They can be anything from a supply drop to a situational advantage like battlefield knowledge or blackmail. There are several named downtime activities, each with very detailed possible outcomes depending on your role. Each of them can result in gaining reserves or just contribute to your collective narrative. If you want to have non-mech combat in narrative mode, you're asked to not track turns or make attack rolls. Instead, you just make one or a few skill checks to resolve the fight. If your pilot is reduced to zero HP for whatever reason, you roll a d6 to see what happens. Incidentally, death of your pilot in this game doesn't mean permanent death. You can be cloned and decanted, but at the potential cost of picking up mutations or complications with your clone. This game has two modes, but a lot of the folks I've talked to and hung out with online appear to embrace the mech combat rather than the narrative. The mech combat rules are not exactly dead simple, but they're not ultra crunchy either. Gameplay is turn-based, with one player always getting initiative over enemies. Distance and size ratings are important, so it's recommended that you use a grid. All examples in the book are in hex grid. Each player has one move and either a full or two quick actions. This, of course, can be stretched to more depending on your mech's systems and traits. Min-maxers can rejoice, since there are ways to build an action stack that can take out an enemy mech in one turn. There are all the rules for moving, jumping, falling, flight, and teleportation that I won't go into, and there are different attack types, line, cone, blast, and burst. 
Damage also comes in different flavors. Energy Explosive, damage, energy, damage, kinetic, burn, kinetic and heat. Damage, you calculate incoming damage by first taking the damage roll, reducing or increasing it by whatever statuses or special trade or weapon rules that apply, then subtract your armor rating from that number, then subtract any resistance bonuses you have for that type of damage. The result is the HP that you lose. Your mech has four structure, and each time you reach zero HP, you lose one structure and make a structure damage roll to see what kind of major damage HP you take. Zero. On your structure last structure, sustained. when you get to zero Left HP, your mech is finished. The amount of HP you have for each structure depends on your build. There is a lot of emphasis on heat and overheating in mech combat. Attacks can cause you to pick up heat damage, which ignores any armor protection, or you can inflict heat damage on yourself by overcharging for an extra quick action during your turn. If you exceed your mech's heat, heat cap, cap you pick up one stress, stress point and sustained. have to roll on the overheat table. If you roll poorly on this table, or if you reach zero stress, your fusion core melts down and your pilot is instantly obliterated in a huge explosion that could potentially take out everything around you. I polled members of the RPG and Lancer communities about if they thought Lancer was a war game RPG hybrid, and the consensus was largely that it was not, that in fact it was just an RPG. A lot of folks were quick to point out a ton of features war games have that Lancer does not. The reason I posed this question was because in reading Lancer I was definitely getting some war game vibes. All of the battle map examples are in hex grid and the section on how to run combat has a lot of military terms as well as really awesome tactical templates. These templates really reminded me of war games, but I have to agree with the community on the general classification of the game. The mech combat portion is flavored like a war game, but the overall objective at the table is still collaborative storytelling above all else, and that's really an RPG thing. The section on NPCs is pretty staggering in its length and depth. The book offers 30 mech archetypes organized across the five roles. Each of these can be used as friendlies or as enemies on the battlefield and are fully statted out across three tiers of power. There's just a lot of mechanical variety between each NPC here. The section goes on to offer archetypes for humans, squads, and monstrosities, and lists a dozen non-mech NPC templates ranging from commander to pirate to ship. The book runs 430 pages, and about 100 pages are dedicated to the setting. I touched a bit on it earlier with Computer Lady Voice, but basically it's the distant future. Trillions of humans have settled across the galaxy using a warp called Blink Space, and they're all ruled by a sort of communistic post-scarcity government called Union. The setup for this world is great, with a timeline and pages of history where humanity reached rock bottom multiple times with war and self-destruction. The way the book describes where you are currently in the timeline is that humanity has reached a peak. Things have reached their best and now the coin is falling, again. Eventually, maybe in a few years or maybe in a hundred, there will be another great war. And the lead up to that war starts right where you are, doing cleanup missions on distant colonies and stirring things up, maybe in ways your pilot doesn't fully understand yet. As a caveat, this is not a setting that's easy to comprehend. Most of these 100 pages are filled with text walls and the history is intricately detailed. Also, the number of worlds and colonies themselves are vast. The way I see it, Lancer can be played with this deep setting in mind, or people can play it like Rock'em Sock'em Robot Jocks, where it's mostly just about the mech battles. Alright, here are my pros and cons on Lancer. Cons. Page design. To be fair, the font and styling choices for the pages is very utilitarian and readable, and maybe that was ultimately where the creators decided to call it a day, but there's a certain sterile blandness to the layout that clashes with the vibrant, super colorful style of the illustrations. Also, there's a great color-coded system to the text boxes, but I couldn't find where it explains it in the book what the colors mean, and I had to ask the Lancer community to decode that for me. Decision Paralysis There are so many options and possibilities for your mech that it's frankly overwhelming. It's the reason why this game strongly suggests starting with that Everest mech, with its limited list of options just to get you warmed up. Pros CompCon This web app is pretty much nothing like I've ever seen for an RPG outside of D&D Beyond, and like Beyond, it's indispensable when trying to play this game. I can't stress that enough. Skip the character sheet PDF. If you want to try Lancer, read the rules and then go straight to CompCon to roll up your pilot and mech. Artwork. The mech illustrations in this book are distinctive and colorful. They firmly and repeatedly establish that this is not a future of clunky, walking tanks. 
It's more of a freaky, mysterious future where swirls of powerful technologies converge inside of these ultimate tools of destruction. Honestly, I'd wear some of these mech designs on a t-shirt. Very cool stuff. All human setting. The all human sci-fi setting is something that really resonates with me. As much as I like the zoo of races in most sci-fi games, Lancer focuses on humans in order to get more specific about smart sociological what-ifs. The setting is described plausibly in the context of humans doing human things. If it were to include alien races, the whole dynamic would change and a lot of the impact would be lost. I'm going to level with you right now. As much as I admire the mech battle half of this game, which is more like four-fifths of this game, I'd want to play Lancer with deeply simplified battle rules and focus on the narrative mode. I want to play a denizen of Union and explore this galaxy that's on the march to a cataclysmic war. But that's just me. Most fans of Lancer show up for dramatic mech battles, and their pilots live and die and live again to serve that thrill. And that's cool too. Thanks for watching. This is Dave signing off. See ya. Condition immobilized. Heat damage sustained. Heat damage sustained. Heat damage sustained. Heat cap breached. Stress sustained. Stress exhausted. Overheating. Reactor meltdown in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.